Today is the 1st of April 2024, and Microsoft has just released the successor to Windows 11. And as loyal Microsoft enthusiasts, we here at Windows Lectures have been given exclusive access to try this exciting new release and talk about its many cool features. But before we get into that, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Colgate VPN. We all know the internet is full of cookies, viruses, and other kinds of internet plaque. Your privacy and security are important, and the all-new Colgate VPN masks your public IP address to protect you on public Wi-Fi. It uses military-grade encryption to protect your smile online and keep your browsing activity minty fresh. Subscribe within the next 14 days for the chance to win a free AI-powered electric toothbrush when you use code WINDOWS13 at checkout. Anyway, back to the video. So the first thing that will probably surprise most of you is the name, Windows 13. Windows 11 is obviously the current version of Windows, so why have Microsoft decided to skip Windows 12? Well, the answer is rather ambiguous, and we weren't able to find a definitive answer, though Microsoft is quite renowned for its bizarre naming conventions when compared to its competitors. This isn't new, as Microsoft decided to skip Windows 9, so some people may argue that Microsoft just wants to be unique, which we love. Another theory is that founder Bill Gates, former CEO Steve Ballmer, and current CEO Satya Nadella have a secret obsession with prime numbers, so some suspect that all future builds of Windows after Windows 11 will be named after prime numbers, with Windows 17, 19, and 23 predicted to be successors to Windows 13 in the distant future. So what's new about Windows 13? Well, on the surface, it looks kind of similar to Windows 11, but there are some important differences. To start with, all the old-school Windows programs have been removed, so that means Notepad, WordPad, Microsoft Paint, Command Prompt, and even Control Panel have been replaced with modern equivalents. The most significant change is with how Windows is licensed. For years, you would pay maybe $100 to $200 for a lifetime Windows license. But the problem is that money-hungry key sites have been reselling Windows keys for about $20 to $30, which is an absolute disgrace for hardworking people like you and me, who are willing to give Microsoft our money for a real Windows license. To combat this, Microsoft has taken inspiration from Xbox Game Pass and Microsoft 365 to give us the Windows Plus subscription. So instead of $100 to $200 for a permanent license, it's $9.99 a month for Windows 13 Home, $19.99 a month for Windows 13 Pro, and $29.99 a month for Windows 13 Enterprise. Microsoft has lowered the prices because it's a very generous company, and for just $9.99 a month, Windows has never been more affordable. This also means that local user accounts are a thing of the past, but who needs them anyway? Another change to Windows has been with AI and virtual assistants. Admittedly, while we at Windows Lectures love Cortana, we have to admit that she was a major flop when compared to Siri, Alexa, and Google Assistant, which is why Microsoft has been working on a new voice assistant called Microsoft Steve, which combines the power of Bing, Copilot, and Cortana into one package. Hey Steve. What's the weather in Penzance? I'm sorry, but the United Kingdom is not a real country, so I cannot assist you with that. Wait, Steve is a girl? Windows Defender has also improved through Microsoft's collaboration with McAfee and Norton, arguably the best antiviruses on the market. So good, in fact, you can even mine Bitcoin in the background and earn a bit of pocket change for that new car you're saving for. The home edition of Windows 13 will also be ditching Ethernet and USB peripheral support, which is understandable when you think about it. Like, who needs wired connections anyway? This is 2024, not 2004, and it's also better for security. Like, what if a hacker just plugs something into your laptop? Just do everything over Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, bro. Finally, Windows 13 will be ditching passwords in favour of three-factor authentication. Three is obviously a bigger number than two, therefore it's better. So first you enter a PIN, then you scan your face, and then you receive an OTP on your smartphone. Now, Linux users will argue these changes are a huge violation of digital privacy, and they're bad for user freedom. But of course, they're just scaremongering. Do you really think a big company would spy on you? Finally, Windows 13 will have full support for ARM and RISC-V, so you can run Windows 13 on basically anything. Your phone, your fridge, your coffee maker, and even your car. Anyway, I'm so thrilled for the final release of Windows 13. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below, and until next time, cheerio.